coming to you from the Sunshine State. Your host, Couch Tomato! Hey, I'm Couch Tomato, and I'm joined by... Hulk. Welcome to Stuff for Movie Buffs, and today we're talking about something a little bit more serious. So before we actually get into that, uh, what we're talking about, as always... I need your usual pinky promise that you guys will conduct yourselves in the way that's traditional with the couch tomato way. So put your right hand on your heart and the other one in the air. Repeat after me, guys. You guys ready? Say, I I am a movie fan. Am a movie fan. As a movie fan. As a movie fan. I won't get mad. I won't get mad. I can't get mad. I can't get mad. And I'll keep my anger to myself. And I will keep my anger to myself. All right, traditionally, we do that creed on this podcast, mainly because as movie fans, sometimes we take things a little too serious. Um, and it's important to respect other people's opinions on this podcast. Today, we're going to move from movies for just one second. Um, we're going to actually talk about uh, what held us up this week. See, usually we record our podcast and upload them by Sunday. But this week was pretty hectic. Hulk and I are based in Florida. Uh, we had a hurricane this week. I uploaded my Wednesday video a day late because of the hurricane warnings. And um, I couldn't even see Birth of a Nation this week because our local theater was flooded. So we kept our word and we still managed to, uh, you know, entertain your ears by uploading this podcast today. Um, if you're listening to this right now, my, my hopes are that we'll get this podcast out Monday. But um, definitely a lot of the stuff that we were going through, it was kind of hectic in Florida. So I was touched by the hurricane pretty bad. Hulk, it, it, I mean, it just kind of scraped you a little bit in yeah. Central Florida. Yeah, we were, we were pretty um, lucky. Like it didn't really, you know, hit us too hard. Yeah. So me, I really, and I mean, let me tell you something. With hurricanes, the thing about them, I grew up, like my first major hurricane was Hurricane Andrew, mm -hmm. one of the more popular ones to hit South Florida. Yeah. Uh, I, like the the worst, I could take the tropical storms. Like when you think about natural disasters per um, like sectors, you know, California deals with the earthquakes. I, I don't want to, I'm not about that life. Um, when you think about North, um, the North, uh, you know, East Coast really dealing with um, blizzards and stuff like that. I'm not about that life either. Yeah. Hurricanes, I, I always looked at it as a more comfortable natural disaster. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, that's just my opinion because I'm so used to them. Because the worst thing that happens in Florida is we have to deal with the blackouts. So my power's been out since Friday, you know, and it, it sucks because I went shopping Monday and then the hurricane warning started hitting Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my groceries could have been down the drain. But I tell you this, that's only a small thing on the scale compared to the disaster that took place with Hurricane Matthew. And I'll, I'll go into it. And that's why I'm moving away from movies for a quick second. We'll get back into it. But, you know, I'm uh, my my peoples, my mom and dad are from Haiti. Hope where are your peoples from? Same Haiti. Yeah. yeah so I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this on the podcast. So when I break down to you guys on hurricane destruction, the worst hurricane I've lived through was Hurricane Andrew. Total casualties. I just looked this up. It was 65. So 65 people died in total. Right. For Hurricane Andrew. Katrina is another major one that I think uh, most of America knows about. Mm -hmm. And Katrina's total uh, death toll, mm -hmm. total fatalities were between 1,300 and 1,900. Pretty dramatic. Now, when you um, look at what the deaths alone with Hurricane Matthew, the deaths that uh, death tolls in um, Haiti, right now they keep rising every day. Yeah. Before my power went out, it was at like 284. I kept checking it and then it was at 400. Um, yesterday it was at 800. I just checked it right before this podcast and it just um, crossed a thousand. Wow. So that's pretty crazy. Like if you've, um, it's, 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 it's sad, it's unfortunate. I talked to my mom yesterday, um, kind of told her I was okay. And she said our family out there is okay as well. Nobody was really touched. So that's just a huge blessing. And I, I spoke with you, Hulk. What did you say? Yeah, my family was blessed as well. Like we didn't have to deal with any fatalities. Like, um, with our area, it wasn't greatly affected. It was still affected, but it wasn't as affected as some of the other parts of Haiti. Yeah, so with a PSA announcement, I want to, you know, at least take this time to say, if you feel compelled to donate and you're watching those reports, um, I left some links in the description where you can sow a seed. Trust me, anything is a plus. Uh, cents to you is like hundreds to those people overseas. So if you give up a can of 
Pepsi or Coke for a day. It could possibly clothe or feed someone in Haiti for a week. So um, I included some Haitian-led organizations as well as some non Haitian led organizations. They're in the description, whether you're watching this on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcast information from, check the description out and just kind of look look at those sites. But um, go ahead, um, Ho, can you just list off a couple for yeah. those people? We have Haiti Community. We have the Lumbi Fund. We have Combi Soleil Leve. And, and then we have um, Volunteer Pool the de, de Development de IET. And, and we have some non Haitian organizations. We have um, Doctors Without Borders, Roots of Development, and Partners in Health. Yeah, I let him read it because his Creole is way better than mine's. <laughs> so, a good job on that. So, once again, like my power's been out since when did the hurricane hit? Friday or Thursday? About Thursday. Thursday yeah, night so, into Friday. Yeah, so Thursday morning was when my power went out. And it's Monday. It's still off. You know, just um, kudos to Ice and Igloo um, coolers. Uh, so uh, And also, Hulk let me use this place for his Wi-Fi. So kudos to that. Regardless of my situation, when I look at Haiti, and even in light of the whole political um, temperature right now in mm -hmm. America, sometimes as, you know, a citizen, you're always, man, you know, America isn't what it used to be. But it's stuff like this that makes me think, wow, like I'm truly fortunate. You know what I mean? So yeah. whatever I'm going through, it could have always been 10 times worse. And um, I want it. It always comes back to movies because I think we do an injustice when we don't e at least give the people what they want. So today we didn't get to go see Birth of a Nat Nation. If you if you got to see it, you know, go ahead and spoiler it for me on the Facebook page. Head over to Facebook. We started doing some exclusive videos over there that you could only catch on Facebook, not on YouTube. So check us out there. But if you've seen it, you liked it, and you think me and Hoke should revisit, go ahead and let us know. Um, but uh, today, we'll be talking about disaster movies. You know, and then, um, it always, one thing I like about disaster movies, it puts stuff like this into perspective. Like it could always be worse. Like I'd rather deal with a blackout than being stomped by Godzilla or, you know, being trampled by Man of Steel, you know, some Kryptonian. So I want us to pick three disaster movies each. Okay. And then we're going to um, have some fun with it and let us um, have some fun in the comment section as well. I'll put this part on YouTube and uh, just go ahead and let us know if you think you would survive that disaster movie. All right. Based off of your technique and survival skills, let us know. So um, I got my three. I'm going to talk about the day after tomorrow, and I gave us a um, cap on Roland Emmerich movies, so you only pick one. Um, I'm picking The Day After Tomorrow. Man of Steel, it counts as a disaster movie. It, it does. And uh, Shaun of the Dead. I, I consider that those apocalyptic-type movies disaster. Um, give me your three. Well, I have Godzilla, obviously. Um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which is an interesting That's a for different. Me. I'll, yeah. I'll count that. And then um, World War Z. All right, good. I, I definitely agree with the last one. I'll let you slide with the other two. Um, <laughs> let's let's talk about yours first. Uh huh. Um, your first one was Godzilla. Let's talk about Godzilla. Which one are you picking? Ninety eight or? I'm gonna go with 2014, just because it's more fresh in my mind. I would definitely survive 1998. I would survive both, actually. But uh, let me tell you. Um, let me. It's your movie. Tell me. Um, what would you do? You would you survive number one, or would you end up getting? killed by whether it was the military because the military did more damage yeah I, I think i would die from the military because the military was just it was savage like they was just you, you know saw what, what they did to the bridge yeah was it, yeah they, they, they were just blowing stuff up i should have picked some pacific rim now that i think about it that's <laughs> i would have died on that one but um go ahead i, I interrupted yeah because i'm like i'm looking at you know god bless our troops i love them but in in that movie they were tripping like they were you know blowing stuff up left and right and correct For, uh, I, I i wasn't a big fan of um 2014's godzilla mm -hmm. the first time he was introduced to civilians was it the tsunami i remember well if it wasn't the tsunami i don't know why you would be at a beach when there's reports of a monster I think it was a tsunami because I remember them. Okay, like so running. that's acceptable because yeah. it's the first time they've seen them. Yeah. Right? But um, I would have either, if I if I was gone from that movie, because there, one thing you couldn't hide, me, my survival tactics are, you're going to see this play out with the movies I pick. My rule is if you're trying to survive a disaster movie, always run towards 
the destructive the destruction like the areas that have been destroyed already like if you look at um godzilla never st stomped on a building twice so if you go towards a, a destroyed building, yeah. he's not coming your way again. But you couldn't run because not only did he impose physical destruction, like tearing up buildings and stuff, but he caused natural disasters like a tsunami. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like um explosions. And I think they even had to, they was using missiles. You couldn't really avoid that stuff. Like the only people that made it out that movie safely when they were like around the military was that school bus. I'm pretty sure that was the movie. They were on the uh Sam, it wasn't the San Francisco bridge, but it was some bridge. It was these kids on the school bus. So I'm definitely, if I have to put my money on it, I'm going to die. And it won't be f directly from Godzilla. It'll be from me trying to use my <laughs> regular tactics. And then you say you're going to. I would die. Yeah, you would yeah, definitely die. I would be dead. All right, so cool. All right, so my minds. Uh, and you said I stole this movie from you when we <laughs> talked originally. Yeah. It's the day after tomorrow. Out of the Roland Emmerich films. I think this is the worst. If you cor correct me if I'm wrong, to me it's the most legit. Like a, yeah. a lot of people like it, even because a lot of people hate on Godzilla '98. A lot of people hate on um, 2012 and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I never hear somebody just outright hate no. Day After Tomorrow. And it's it, it actually science-wise, it, it's the worst one. Like, yeah, that to me that's the scariest one because to not me there's it, nothing you can do to stop it. But it's also the worst scientific like type of um you know foundation mm -hmm. i i was in high school when this movie came out and i had a forensic class my, mm -hmm. my senior year so you guys just dissect the whole thing? my teacher hated on it that's the first time i ever saw nitpicking uh -huh. i saw it in theaters i loved it and this yeah. is when at that age you just love popcorn movies because you don't you know the culture now where people just all, all of a sudden dissect movies for like okay this wouldn't happen in real life yeah the internet wasn't as big yeah the internet mm -hmm. we were still on uh probably google Yahoo was a more than yeah, um, Google at the have, time. Like, you know, Netscape was Twitter. still around. <laughs> like, you know, Bing didn't exist. And so with that, he just went to town on it, talking about, you know, you guys are idiots because cold doesn't travel. Heat does. <laughs> so the fact that cold is traveling, it's it's t it wouldn't you you wouldn't survive. But for all intensive purposes, let's pretend this did happen the same way it played out in the movie. I'm not putting up a fight. I'm probably not dying from the natural disaster itself. Mm -hmm. It would be a violent, like it would be a, uh, I would commit suicide by mistake. <laughs> and the reason being, I'm not surviving the cold, bro. I'm just not. That's, that's why I live in Florida. That's why I'll <laughs> never move. When I think about destinations I would possibly live, yeah. snow shouldn't be a factor. Like I, I, I always consider places that don't snow, like, I'm just not surviving the cold. Like what I would probably end up doing, because I was I would be so freezing and I probably wouldn't dress for the occasion. Mm -hmm. I would have found a nice little statue to su suicide myself up under. <laughs> and I would have just ended up, you know, deucing it. Like I'm just not in and, and the wolf scene alone. You remember the wolf scene, right? Yeah. Yeah, like they had to go get the medicine and on the ship and they had to go through wolves. I would have died because I I'm like, you know what, the medicine isn't that important. I'm just gonna wait this out. I'm really just going to wait this out and just kind of whatever. Like, I know I'm not surviving that movie, but I stole this movie from you. We're already, I'm already two for two. Like, I died twice. Tell me, like, um, are you surviving or? or I, I would survive only because I was born cold, born in February, born in Jersey, which is cold during that time. So me saying, oh, I would die in a film cold, like, nah, that wouldn't look right. It wasn't me. New Jersey type cold. It was like- I know, it was apocalyptic, apocalyptic end of the world type cold. But like still, 60, 70, 80 below. I've learned enough tactics where some of those days in Jersey, it feels like apocalyptic type cold. Like I'm dealing, straight. I get, <laughs> I start crying when it's 70 degrees. And I always say, Florida 70 degrees is equal to like 30 degrees in Jersey. Nah, but chill, chill, chill. I know you, you from there. So you just go shoot it down. Um, let me hear your second one. My second one, which is an interesting one. You said it doesn't count, but let me explain why it does. I'm going to say Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Tell me why this counts as a disaster movie. Because that's terrifying. Imagine it, apes. Oh, okay. As a kid, I used to, like, whenever I, we went to the zoo, you know, I'm a class trip. Wait, you like picking, that. which one is Rise? Second one is Rise? I think the first one is Rise. Okay, so I would have I would have counted the first one more of a disaster than the second one. But you would? Because this apes is running wild. Like, that's okay. this equivalent to, but you picked the one where they're, when they're in the woods. 
Yeah. So you, you're calling it a disaster. You're in their territory. It's no longer a disaster. <laughs> you put yourself in a disaster, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Here's why. Because um, as a kid growing up, I'm always like fascinated with animals because I'm like, they're the ones that should be running the world. They're bigger than us, stronger than us, faster than us. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can, hand, they can handle themselves outside. So it's just like, but, you know, we're born with, you know, conscience. We're born with intellect. We're born with, you know what I'm saying? All mm-hmm. these different things that help us, you know, have dominion over them. But at the same time, like. They got that formula on this movie. Yeah. Like, they, they're they <laughs> the ones that are becoming smarter. And they already have the physical attributes. And the thing is, I'm a big dude. You know, you know, when I walk in the room, people are always like, oh, man, you're huge. That's why like, we call you Hope. Yeah. So, but in this movie, I would be like nothing compared to these You're guys. Like, they could throw me around like I'm a little rag doll, like a toy. So it's just like, just that fear alone, like just that thought, like, man, apes with, uh, you know, with um, intelligence running the world, like forget about it. Now, you know, in this movie, so are you living or dying? I'm dead. I'm long dead. I'm going to die, but it'll be in, of honor. Like I would, de- <laughs> I would die defending my family and also the other humans. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, like Without a doubt. in this movie, humans are the bad guys. Yeah. But if, if, Apes are charging towards me with the tank. I hope I don't have Peter people out there that are just gonna hate on me when I start lighting them up. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm on that tower just lighting them up. I'm just like, nope, nope. Got Caesar, AK, you get the pass, a- <laughs> but everybody else, you, you're done. Like, but I would end up dying because if you, if you notice, the humans lost that initial battle. Yeah. So I would end up dying in, you know, kind of like during the art of war or whatever. So. Yeah, and and Dreyfus, um, Gary Oldman's character, he would have been tripping. Gary he Oldman would've... stayed <laughs> like, being a horrible leader. He yeah. the reason why people was hating on Batman and Rise, but that's another story. <laughs> um, so I picked. Um, this is my third one already. Uh, now I'm going to my. I, I swear I didn't get the time. No, this is your it. second one. Okay, all right, there we go. I felt like all right, I left something out. So, Man of Steel is my second. Yeah. You're just three for three with deaths. All right. I'm d- no, no. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm surviving Man of Steel. And let me tell you why. Me too. I, I, I want to say love this movie because, uh-huh. um, and I know a lot of people don't like Man of Steel, but I looked at it more from a, like a, to me, it seems more in line with what would happen if an alien came to Earth. We're yeah. not going to welcome him. Welcome him right away. No, nope, we're gonna I, be skeptical. And the fact that you could draw direct correlations between Jesus and um, I did the you know twenty four reasons. reasons. Yeah, um, Passion of Christ, same as matter still. I think you know how scripture wise it says Jesus is coming back. Yeah, I think he would be met with the same type of welcome at. It's like the government's gonna co- try to try to control him first. Like hold on, hold on, Jesus. Like <laughs> ch- we don't know you. We don't know you like that. Yeah, and um. I felt this movie was in line with if aliens came to Earth, this is how it would happen to them, to us. We're like to them, we're ants. So they crushing us like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like he just went to town. I would use my same tactic. Like if I was in the city, Metropolis, I'll tell you straight up, I'm not in a building because they got 48 hours of a. Um, if yeah, it he was, warned them. He warned them. Zod did warn them. He, Zod warned them 48 hours before the destruction took place and they still went to work. I'm calling sick. Yeah. I'm so that's, <laughs> that's one. I'm moving away from the city because if they told me Superman was hiding in Kansas and I found out, I'm going straight to Florida. If you, t- I'm running to Florida, but if not, if I was in the city, I would move towards the destruction. Like if you saw the way his um, engine was um, working, it would smash a certain area, then move on. So I, I'm, a, I'm athletic enough to at least kind of like run, like wait for the um, seconds between each blast yeah. and run towards a, a damaged building. But my initial reaction, I would go to church. Like if this was real talk, like if aliens are coming to earth, naturally I'm going to probably start doubting my faith or whatever and I need some type of reassurance. I'm going to church, if not just to chill because they, you know, the brick and mortar is a little stronger than my household. Mm-hmm. And it, by the way, it's obvious that the father and priest in that movie survived because he was also at Clark's funeral on Batman v Superman. I don't yes. know if you caught that. Caught that. He the one that delivered that sermon um, before Clark f- faked his death. So he survived. And I'm pretty sure he was at the house of God this whole time. So I would have went there. I would have chilled, ate some Ritz, and I would have <laughs> called it a day. So this is my first survival out of all of the disaster movies we talked about. You? Well, let oh, me yeah. Don't Same. steal mine and go to church. <laughs> definitely stole one but uh yeah i would i would definitely not be in the city um but let me see 
I'll probably just hide out, you know, just away from everything. Like, uh, just away from Kansas. They went to the Indian Ocean. Like, if you notice, that fight was happening. It yeah. was very omnipresent almost, you know? Yeah. Because he had the, the world injury was pretty, he had it pretty spaced out. Yeah. But at the same time, there was enough. That's the thing. There was enough time. Once he announced he was attacking, like, there was enough time for for I'm where going to mom's house. Yeah. Like, just get under a shelter. Get underground. Get somewhere. Like I would have, I would definitely found like a safe haven somewhere. Yeah, I would. I mean, it looks like Kansas got most of the damage, and everybody, every place else was body of waters. Yeah. You know, oh, so. Metropolis and Gotham, which Batman v Superman let us know got hit too. So. Yeah. So I mean, um, I would stay away from Gotham and you know Metropolis. Gotham, you wouldn't be there anyway. It's dangerous. Like yeah. the way they make it seem in Batman v Superman. No, you it's don't want to like, live there. It's like Harlem from Luke Cage. Yep. So uh, <laughs> that's my second. What's your second? Oh, now I'm actually at my third. Oh, what's your third? My third is World War Z. World War Z, I picked Shaun of the Dead. And um, some people are going to argue with us those aren't disaster movies. They're zombie apocalypse. That's a disaster, guys. But um, let's kind of talk about these interchangeably, I guess. Uh, are you surviving? Yes or no? No, no way. I'm dead, too. No and way. I'm, I'm going to be dead for good reasons. Let me hear your <laughs> reasons first. I'm going to be dead just... Off of just the um, with World War Z, one thing that's another thing that I always used to always think about when I'm watching the zombie movies. Like with zombie movies, like the zombies are moving slow. They're like I'm Them like I could I like could, fantasy I could, football I could, type I, stars. Yes. The with World War Z, they're running, and that's the thing that would get me caught. It's like, scarier we're, too because they're everywhere. Like yeah, they were every in every country. Yeah, it was like and there's like they're just insane. There's like swarms of them. With, like, the other zombie movies, it's just, like, little herds here and there. You know, one or two in a house. With them, it was just, like, these herds of just these fast-moving zombies. Like, I know for a fact, like, I would be gone. It's, like, with the other movies, I would have a chance because, like, they're slow enough. And, um, like, I would peep, like, if somebody's acting up a little bit. Like, I'm going to, like, okay, I'm going to stay away from you. I don't care. Like, if you're my mom, if you're, like, someone that I'm close to, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to, like, you know, just you know, distance myself or even have to kill you. But I don't know if you, if regards to that, can you do I'm that? I'm dead. Let me tell you why. <laughs> and I'm dying for good reasons. I don't care. Like, it took Rick and those guys on Walking Dead seven episodes to get used to killing children, right? And the governor never got used to it. And I never, I always understood the governor. Like, I'm not killing my son. I'm not killing my daughters. And if my wife turned... I'm hiding her in the basement, bro. Like, so it's like if, and remember my movie is Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead zombie apocalypse couldn't last it. It, it seemed like it was like less than three days, maybe. Yeah. So it would have took me like, like three or four weeks to get used to the idea of my, okay, you know what? They're not coming back. Let me just put them out of their misery. But I would probably be the type to be like, nah, you know, let's just wait. Let's just wait it out. Cause you don't know, you know, like, um, Obamacare is going to take care of this. You know, I would just make up yeah, some type cure. of excuse. And then, um, me. yeah, like if I'm looking at my daughter and she tries to kiss me, I'm just like, all right, come give daddy a kiss. Maybe <laughs> you, like this, it works in Disney movies. Usually kisses from <laughs> yeah, your Prince Charming's and stuff like that. So I'm just like, I'm getting bit. It's not, I'm getting bit early because I'm, I'm too passionate about my family. So, and if you look in those movies, the dumber you are, the longer you survive. Like Shaun of the Dead, the main lead, he wasn't that bright. Like his idea was, let's go get drunk and let's head to this pub. I would have been more so, let's go to the school. It's a basement there. It's a hurricane shelter. So w the walls could stand it. And then I would have been walking into a disaster. So with these movies, the dumber you are, longer you survive, minus World War Z. He was the smartest guy in the film. Yeah. And he actually came up with the idea for the cure. I'm not really about that. And the way I am about gas, I wouldn't really have the will to travel. I was like, I got to conserve my gas. So I'm staying here in my house. Oh, yeah, my, house with a, my house would have yeah, got overtaken. Your whole family would have eaten you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm done. Like, my, me and my family, we're gone. We'll be zombies together. Um, so I'm, I'm dead in that one, too. So I'm one, four, three. And you're what? Um, the same. One for three. Yeah, that's yeah. not that bad. But all, all in all, like we're we're talking about disaster movies. I always look for movies for a silver lining. Like you know what I mean? I, movies they're fake, and you could just pick at them all you want. But at the end of the day, they're there for enjoyment and entertainment. And it's moments like this, like what happened to Haiti. 
this is like my um sanctuary it sucks because i got a blackout and i couldn't enjoy movies like i wanted to during the whole um <clears throat> hurricane yeah uh recovery process but um definitely once again if you feel moved and you want to go ahead and um uh so see check out the the organizations that we left in the description do that also let us know in the comment section what's your favorite disaster movie and also do you think you would have survived yes or no uh, so all in all guys it's about that time thanks for joining us today uh, before you leave if you like what you heard make sure to subscribe to us on itunes soundcloud or wherever you go for your podcast don't let this be the last time we hear from you or you hear from us support the show by giving us a rating and a review on itunes it would really mean a lot guys also join us next week and check out the show notes where to find us weekly it's couch tomato films on youtube facebook and instagram couch tomato film on twitter and last but not least peace <laughs>